they're the treatment for it. And with proper treatment, he can be saved. Right. Can be healed. Now what I need you to do is, uh, the problem is his diet is not good. <laughs> He's not eating well, so, so I need you to make sure that you prepare uh, three healthy meals for him every day. He needs to have a solid, good breakfast every morning. And he needs to have a, a, a homemade, solid lunch every day. You need to make sure that you cook him a, a, a solid, good meal in the evening. Uh, and make sure that, that he's taken care of properly. Not a lot of preservatives, just, just good home cooking breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I don't want him eating a lot of sweets, but if he does, make sure that you make them uh, ever so carefully for him with ingredients, not the stuff that's store bought, just you gotta make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> He's suffering from, from allergies as well, so you gotta make sure that, that you keep the house clean and dust. That's well. Do you have any questions for me? She says, no, sir. And, and therefore, he, he said, well, we need to go tell your husband what's going on with him. Would you rather for me to break the news to him or for you? With tears in her eyes, she said she'd break the news to him. Walked back in the room, her husband looked at her and knew that it was bad. And said, uh, what did the doctor say? She said, the doctor said, you're going to die. <laughs> because she knew she was not going to cook. <laughs> so meals, she was not going to. So you're going to die. The reality of it is, the reality of it is, that there are people in our lives. Yes, sir that could die and go to hell because we're not willing to serve them. We're not willing to make the sacrifice to serve them. Lord, give me the heart of a servant. Lord, give me the heart of a servant. Do I have a servant's heart. Am I more concerned about being served than I am about serving someone else? Yes. The highest position in the kingdom yes, sir. is servant. Yes. And the least wanted position in the kingdom is that of a servant. Yeah, yeah. Real quick, let's look. In this text that we read, it's, it's the night before the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Jesus has told a couple of his disciples to go and prepare a room so they can have their last meal together and celebrate what was a Passover. His public ministry has ended, and now Jesus turns his full attention to his disciples. Jesus is in the upper room with his disciples. In that room, sitting at a table. All right. Jesus is there, and, and there are 12 disciples along with him. These disciples were, were just mere humans. Some of them were self-centered, the reality of it is, if you look at the scriptures carefully, oftentimes they didn't get along with each other. Right. Uh, they were kind of selfish in their attitude. As a matter of fact, there was a time when Jesus had a crowd of about four or 5,000 people. And they told Jesus to send the people home hungry. Because mm -hmm. they were more concerned about their needs than 
than the people's needs. Even one of them sitting at the table will betray Jesus for money. Now, these are the people sitting in this room with Jesus. And the atmosphere is such as this. Jesus knows that within the next 24 hours, he will be hanging on the cross. However, he's there, he's there with those he loved the most. Right. In this room were flawed men. Men who, who weren't perfect. Yeah. Right. But yet they could sit at the table with Jesus. Yeah. Mm. That's a good place to feel grateful. Yeah. To know that, that I don't have to be perfect yes. in order to sit at the table with Jesus. Yeah. He's not looking for perfection, but he is looking for progress. Yeah. I'm not what I ought to be, but I thank God I'm not yeah. what I used to be. Amen. He expects progress. He's looking for progress from us. Listen. So Jesus is there at the table. And let me paint the picture for you. He's there at the table and, and uh, you know, he's told a couple of disciples to go ahead of him and get the room ready. And they got the room ready and, and everybody's sitting there and they're about to break bread and and and, and just before they break bread, uh, and have this last meal together, something is missing. All right. Whenever you are entering into a house, it was customary for the lowest level servant to wash the feet of the guests. All right. And there was no one there to wash the feet. I can use my sanctified imagination and see them sitting at the table and 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 the bowl over in the corner. Water in the corner. Yeah, yeah. And everyone is trying to ignore yeah. the bowl and the water. And Jesus looks around and no one is responding. I can use my, 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 my sanctified imagination and say that one of the disciples could have easily said, well, you know, if I get up and do this, they will expect me to do it all the time. Say it, Ralph. If if I get up and, and serve her right now, she's going to come to expect me to serve her all the time. Right. I can even imagine another one of the, uh, the servants said, "Well, listen, you know, I did it last time. Uh -huh. <laughs> Why can't somebody else do it?" This I know they see the dishes in the sink. So we're going to have a standoff. We're going to walk by that trash can. You know, even the best trash can can only hold so much trash. But we're going to walk by it until somebody else picks it up. Yeah. I do it all the time. Why should I have to do it this time? They're sitting at the table. Yeah. The Bible then says, the Bible says that, Bridget, that, that, that Jesus gets up from the table. Yeah, yeah. And if you really understand the text, it, it's more than the fact that he just set aside his the, the indication is he took off his garment. Yes, he did. And when he took off his garment, the Bible says, then he grabbed a towel, yeah. wrapped it around his waist, girded himself, yeah, yeah. and began to wash the feet of the disciples. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He poured water into a bowl and washed the feet. Now, you got to understand what type of feet we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is not your, your normal pet at the minute, many pet. Because these were the streets these people had walked on with the sandals and they had walked on these dusty streets and, and, and behind the animals that had been walking on the street and who had... Yeah, yeah. 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 And so there was more than just dust and dirt on the feet. And Jesus kneels down and begins to wash the disciples. Yes, sir. 
The indication is that he washes all of the disciples' feet. And then he comes to Peter. Yeah. Yeah. And Peter says, oh no! Not me! Not my feet, Lord! Now you can wash everybody else's feet, but you ain't washing my feet. You know, listen, I recognize that you are the master. Can't wash my feet. And, and, and Jesus simply says that Hey, Peter, I, listen, listen. I understand what you're trying to do. I understand you're trying to impress folk. You know, uh, I know you're saved. I know you're saved. But if I don't wash your feet, listen, that would be an indication that you don't have a part of me. And then Peter loses his mind and says, Lord, but not just my feet. Wash my head. Wash my head. And he said, well, hold on now. You did a little. <laughs> Yeah, listen, 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 you don't need a bath. Right. There's a spiritual lesson that I'm teaching right now. Amen. See, you're good, but not everybody in here is good. Right. Amen. 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 Jesus washes his feet. And then he gets, he gets up, and the text says that. He puts back on his garment. He gets, sits back at the table. All right. Sits back at the table. He says, now I'm going to tell you something right now. Some of you don't realize what I've just done. Some of you don't realize the spiritual implication of what just happened. But you will one day. Yeah. You will understand it better. By and by. Oh, yeah. It's up and says, you don't understand. He says, now let me tell you. What I've done is I've given you an example of what you should do. <laughs> if I am the master teacher, you say, and I do not think it's beneath me to wash feet, you should go and do likewise. Amen. And verse 17 even implies that you are blessed if you go and do it. Yeah, yeah. So the question on the table is, what is the heart of a servant? Verse 3, verse 7, we're going to read fast. A servant knows who they are. They know who they are. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him all things to, into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God. In order to be a servant, you got to be comfortable with who you are. you got to know who you are. you got to know who God has designed you to be, who he has created you to be. you got to know who you are. You cannot serve them until you understand who you are. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, if you are not able to serve because you are on a power trip, mm -hmm. God has called us as Christians to be servants. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. To be servants. To be servants. And before I can serve anybody, I must know who I am. Because when I know who I am, then I am able to prioritize what is important. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is important? I, I, when, I, when I know who I am and who, I, who, I, who I've been called to be and who God has developed me to be, who he has made me to be, when I know who I am, yeah. when, I, when I know who I am, I can remember uh, 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 years back when, when, when our daughters were, were younger, they were always a part of something. Their mother kept them busy. They were in, in dance, uh, dance. They were in chair. They were in tumbling. They were playing basketball. They were always doing something. They were always doing something. And, and I can remember, because they were my children, All right. and I know who I am, yeah. it is my responsibility to support them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Listen, listen, because I could fail as pastor, but I couldn't fail as. Oh, right, right. And when you know who you are, yeah. 
it helps prioritize what you do. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so the first thing that you, uh, the servant does is, is you know who you are. Wanting recognition is a natural tendency, but not wanting the recognition is a spiritual attribute. Yeah. Yeah. When I do it because of who I am, I don't need someone to come and pat me on the back. Right. I don't need someone to, to, to put my name in lights. Right. I don't need them to call me on, on program. I don't need 10 people to go publicly and say, but yeah. when you know who you are. Two, the heart of a servant is willing to do what needs to be done. Mm. Oh, love. The heart of a servant is willing to do what needs to be done. We don't sit around and 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 Waiting for somebody to call us who we know is in need. We do what needs to be done. The Bible says in, in John 13, 4, it says, He rose from the supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel, girded himself. When we serve others, we're serving God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When I, when I see a need, I meet a need. Look, look here, look here. It doesn't take a whole lot of imagination to know that, that if someone loses their job, you don't have to sit around and say, listen, well, call me if you need something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All you have to do is just think about if those checks start rolling into your house. Yeah, yeah. And begin to, to, to go out of your way and meet the need. I have a question. I have a servant's heart. That's, that's, what, I, that's what I do. That's what God is calling me to do. So, we see the need and meet the need. Third, the heart of a servant does not look at the person, but looks at the need. You don't look at the person, you look at the need. Because it's really not about the person. It's about the God that you serve. It's about the God that I serve. Look here. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Jesus gives us a beautiful example. He gets down and washes the feet of the man who's about to hang. He gets down and he serves the person that he knows has a knife in his back. Yeah. Right. God, give me the heart of a servant to recognize that it's not about them. It's about yeah. 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 I mean, can you imagine that that person that's talking about you behind your back right now, that God could ever put you in a place where you need to serve them? Oh, Jesus. But if I really have a heart of a servant, love. If you look at the text, the, text, the Bible is so beautifully written. The text, it only mentions two names of the servants. It indicates that they're all there, but only two names are mentioned. I see. And the two names are mentioned, the first name that's mentioned is the one that's going to betray him. I see. And the second name that's mentioned is the one that's going to deny him. So he is washing the feet of those who will betray him and deny him. Yeah, yeah. Now, let, 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 me, let me give you this. Uh, the hardest people to serve are those who are closest to you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm coming down your street. <laughs> because you got to understand, he did this with the disciples, those who were closest to him. The hardest people to serve oftentimes are the ones who 
who are closest to you. All right, all right. The ones that you really know. But but the reality of it is, if you have a servant's heart and you're going to help win them and keep them on the straight and narrow, you are called to yes. Yes. that child that, that, that disrespects you. You gotta still. It's going to get tight in here because 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 he says the one that betrays him, but yet was close to him. So the indication is the ones that can hurt you the most are the ones that are closest to you, and yet you still got to. You gotta serve. If you really have a servant heart. If it's not about you, but really about the kingdom, you'll go ahead and sure. even when you don't feel like it. Yes, sir. Even when they're talking about you, even when they're, 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 they're making your life. Man. 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 Yeah, true. Sir. Yeah, I see. Sir. Sir. If you really have a servant's heart. Yeah. This is really every servant's heart. He, 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 he sees the need and, and he doesn't look at the person. He looks at, at the need. A servant is willing to put down their titles and pick up a towel. A servant is willing to put down their, their title and pick up a towel. It's not about who you are. It's not about what you've done in the past. It's about service. It's about service. Mm -hmm. It's about service. It's not about you know I'm daddy and you're the child. It's not about you know I'm the man and you the woman. It's about service. Yeah. And let me share with you. There is nothing worse than helping Holy Spirit than for you to have a great servant testimony beyond your house. When folk out in the street testify how good you are. And the folk in your house. <laughs> hmm? I think all of you. I mean, you know, have you ever just realized that 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 you will treat people beyond your home better than you treat people in your home? Right, right. Huh? You walk in the door and not open the door for them and not leave it open for them and you can be out somewhere and a stranger's 20 yards behind you. Oh, take your time. Come on. I'll hold it for you. That's <laughs> it. It's the ones that are closest to us. That by serving, we can reach them. Lord, give me the heart of a servant. Uh, check this out. Last point. Servants are blessed to be a blessing. Verse 17. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Now listen. When I serve those who can't do anything for me in return. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus, Jesus washed washing the feet of those who couldn't do anything for him. Am I able to serve those folk? 
those people who realistically can't do anything for me in return. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. It's easy for me to serve somebody who could do something for me in return. It's easy when I know you've got a lot of paper in and we're going out to eat and, and you're going to pay. Oh, don't worry, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it. But, but can you serve those? Can you serve that, 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 that man on the corner who can't do anything for you and return? All right. That, 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 that child that has lost their way can't do anything in return. And you use the, the uh, Negro statement that you'll need me before I <laughs> can you serve them? Can you serve them and you know them? Can you serve them and you know what they've done? <clears throat> now check this out. I'm gonna stop. Turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2. <clears throat> And this message is the way I always have this one. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 says, Are y'all there? Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men and being found in the appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Listen, something in the text that Jesus says that's very important in this wash of the feet. Chapter 13 of our text, verse seven, Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing you do not understand, but you will know after this. I need you to lean close. When Jesus says something like that, we have to understand that, that there's a deep theological meaning that we could be missing. He didn't say that for no reason at all. When he says, I'm giving you an example. And, and Karen, there's a theolo uh, theological meaning that, that's deep here that's easily missed. Jesus gives us an example of what eternity is like. Now let, let me walk you through it real quick. The story says that Jesus gets up from the table, takes off his garment, puts on a towel, washes the feet, takes off the towel, puts back on his garment, and sits back at the table. The theological meaning behind this text is that Jesus was sitting at the right hand of the Father, at the table of honor. He unclothed his clothes of glory, took them off, put on the clothes of a bond servant, came to earth to serve and clean the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls. Went down to Calvary, died, Look, then when he got up, he put back on his clothes of glory. Yeah, yeah. And then went back and took his seat yeah. at the table of honor. Yeah. The indication is then that for you and for me, God one day is going to ask us for our towel, and in exchange for our towel, we'll get a crown. Yeah. I do it all the time. Born in Mobile, Alabama, but raised on the west side of San Antonio, San Antonio Texas. In those days, were well, well, rough back then, 
we had to, we worked from King City to King City. I think we were hired hands at the house, you know. Uh, uh, our backyard was like a, a, a garden, to the sheriff's with you, and we would fill hands like a, like a plantation back there, you know. And and we had uh, we didn't have much of a house, but it was neat and it was clean. I mean, every week we, we, we kept that house clean. My father used to even mop the garage. You could eat off the floor in the garage. He was pretty particular about it. And and so on Saturdays were our days where we just worked all day. Yeah. You know, can't see the can't see. You know, while the rest of the kids were out playing, we were working. You know, like we used to cut the grass. Listen, listen. We didn't have an edger back then. You know, you know, you know some of y'all were fancy, but y'all had an edger. It, you know, it, listen. I can remember when we graduated, you got that kind of edger with that one wheel and that stick. You, yeah. 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 So somebody, somebody, but before that, my dad used to take a piece of rope, a line, and, and he'd take an axe and he'd yeah. chop the grass up. Yeah. And then it was our responsibility to pull the grass out of it, and it would be straight, y'all. Yeah. Now, now, the only thing is, you step off of it too close, you could twist your ankle in that groove, I mean, because the edge on the house, but he, somebody know what I'm talking about. That's how, you know, but we used to work like that. And the last thing we would do, the last thing we would do, was we had to wash the cars. Mm -hmm. my, my father would wash the cars. He washed the cars, and my responsibility was I had to clean the white walls because I was the smallest, youngest man. So I had to get down there. He would give me an SOS pad, <laughs> <laughs> and you scrub those white. Somebody know what I'm talking about? You get the white walls real good, you know. You scrub them real good, and, and then and then he would wash the car to make sure the car was washed real good, and then he would he would hose the car off it, and then it, then he would. Um, he would, after he did that, he would go in the house. But before he would go in the house, he would take an old towel, right. tear it up, give my brother some, and give me some. Yeah, Cause we had to dry the car off. We weren't going to just let it. Yeah. Come on, man, talk to me. Because we just let it. I, I, I mean, we gonna have this car. We gonna have this car right. You know, listen. We were Mr. Car Wash for Mr. Car Wash was around. You know, so so so, 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 so we were out there drying the car off, getting to dry the car off, and, and it, it, it never failed that you know because I was the youngest, I would often play. I would often play, and, and I, I would be out there working, and, and, and my brother would get frustrated. My my brother, uh, three years ahead of me, he was a talented. He just told me everything. Just being honest, uh, when I got in trouble at school, back back to the story. Okay, listen. And so 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 we're out there driving the car. I'm not driving the car. I'm playing. And so eventually, my brother would just go in the house and tell my father that I'm out there playing. And you know, Daddy come outside and said, "Boy, you ain't playing. I'm turning my scope." <laughs> daddy, I'm driving off the car. Yeah. He lying, Daddy. He lying. And, and, my, and my daddy would say, let me see your tap. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Why are your towels riding? <laughs> the reality of it is, that Jesus is going to come back yes. and he's going to check each one of our towels. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. And the harsh reality of it is your towel may not even be dead. Yes. Have you checked your towel? Good question. Are you really a servant? Yes. Or have you risen to the level on your job at your house, in your community, that you're too good to serve. Have you taken on the mindset, well, I let them, they ought to be serving? No! He's called you, he's called me to be a servant. He comes back and he says, servant, well done. Yeah. Yeah. But he won't say well done if you have not done well. Yeah. Lord, convict me right now. Give me the heart of a servant. How do you know you have the heart of a servant? Listen, 
you become a little bit uncomfortable when folks try to serve you. Yeah. 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 But if you are real comfortable with everybody serving you, you better check your towel. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. All heads are bowed, my eyes are closed. We want to accept you what we call the privilege of the church. That's to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if you confess to your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that he died and was buried and rose again, based on that confession and belief alone, you are saved. He wants to save you. 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 If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior or you're unsure about your salvation, let's get that right. Let's get that right. It's as simple as this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It's a gift. It's a free gift that's been paid for for you. Because God demonstrated his love for you, yet while you were a sinner, while we were sinners, while I was a sinner, that Christ died for me. He died for me. He died for me. He says, the way to sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. But all I have to do is confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that he died, was buried, and rose again. Confess it and believe it. Not understand it all, but confess it and believe it. And the word of God makes it clear that I am saved. He wants to save me. 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 He wants to save me today. He loves you too much to leave you like you are. And there's a reality. I can't, I gotta be honest with you. Man, woman, boy, girl, wherever you are right now, that 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 hell is real. And if you don't accept him as Savior, you can spend eternity in hell. Yes. But if you accept him as Savior, heaven will be your home to live with him forever. Yes. They don't want to pray with us. Give me a servant's heart. Let me understand that it's about serving you. Yes, no. It's not about the person. Lord, I don't, I don't even see the person. I see the need. And know that you see the need and you want me to meet the need. Lord, it's not by accident that you're calling me. Servant and to have a servant's heart. Let's pray. Lord, how we love you, we thank you. As we lift before you anybody who does not know you as Savior. Lord, man, woman, boy, girl, they are sitting here and they're, they're, they're convicted and, and the Spirit is working with them right now. Lord, we just pray right now that they just simply pray this sinner's prayer. Lord, I'm a sinner and I need your grace. Save me, Lord. Lord, I don't understand it all, but I do confess with my mouth. I do believe in my heart that you died, you were buried, and you rose again. Don't understand it, but I believe it, and Lord, based on that confession, that belief, your word says, I'm saved, save me.
I serve someone else. I'm really serving you. And Lord, I know that you are the ultimate gift giver. You reward those who diligently seek. Lord, we are seeking you. No longer do you look at the situation from a selfish perspective. You've called me to be a servant. Give me a servant's heart. For I want to hear those words. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. So Lord, we serve. Lord, we just love you. And we thank you. It's in the precious, powerful name of Jesus I pray. Thanks to God, say amen. 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 Put your hands together.